Hey everyone, how are you all doing? My name is Deborah and today I am going to be giving you my K-drama review for episode 9 and 10 of It's Okay That's Love. So let's start from the very beginning, my favorite scenes and then we'll go to my least favorite scenes. My number one favorite scene, which also was one of my least favorite scenes was when Joan Song had the dream at the beach about Kangoo and how she reacted to it when she immediately found out that he was hallucinating or he had a nightmare. She didn't realize he was hallucinating but she thought he had a nightmare and how she just gave him a hug and she was apologizing because she immediately realized that he had to sleep in the bathroom even though he would be having bad dreams. So I like how, like I said before, her being a doctor who handles patients like him gives her an edge over his situation in that she understands his situation to an extent and what he's going through so i completely love how she handled that and how my second which leads to my second favorite scene when she went to the bathroom with him his bathroom and she tried to put him to sleep i thought that was so cute i thought that was the cutest thing ever now let's go to my third favorite scene because that was just my first and my second favorite scene. Now let's go to my third favorite scene this week. My third favorite scene this week which got me laughing out loud and I was just going crazy and I was hitting the table and laughing and laughing and laughing was when um, Su Kwang, Kwang Su told Jo and Sung, told Jo that he's um, being controlled and he was telling him, eat, don't eat. Eat. <laughs> no, I thought that was the most hilarious thing ever. I just couldn't stop laughing. I just kept on laughing and laughing and laughing. That was so hilarious, and I thought that was so cute. So that was another scene that I liked. So now let's go to my last favorite scene of this week. The scene that I adored this week. Lastly, so my last favorite scene for this week was the scene where um his um. Uh, Jo was with Jesus' ex, and after their whole fight with Jesus' ex, he he and Jesus' ex sat down and they talked about it like grown-up human beings, and they handled the situation beautifully. And he walked away. So I love how he just handled that situation and he walked away from it because there's something I always say about guys. Guys are people who don't really hold grudges that bad they know how to handle their situations unlike girls no offense to girls out there but yeah but guys have a better way of handling their situations they fight it out and they get over it so even though he he wasn't completely over hey sue but i like how um joe and sung was a big man about it joe and sung was a big man about it and he handled it so professionally and he told him hey don't get over hey sue because she's so fast don't try to get over her so fast because it's not possible she's such an awesome girl which he was um saying good things about his girlfriend too but she's such an awesome girl that it won't be easy for you to get over her so i love that he said that and i just love how they handled that situation and became friends again so that was another my favorite scene now let's go to my least favorite scenes and what i thought about the drama as a whole this week my least favorite scene my number one least favorite scene this week was every single scene that he soon was nagging and nagging and trying to sabotage her relationship with him because i felt like she was the one personally trying to sabotage her relationship with him this week so i disliked every single scene that that happened my second least favorite scene was when jl's friend found out about what was going on with jl and i pray to god he has the sense to tell somebody but when he saw when we watched J.O. beating himself oh my goodness no and when um um he went and he found out that kangaroo was not real i was so happy he found out and someone found out but it was just so hard to watch and it was so sad to watch that he's going through all this so it was a really sad situation to watch and experience now my third least favorite scene was the ending of episode 10 when she was nagging him and he's like dude i've had enough of this okay we're done okay and <laughs> stuff but yeah that was my third least favorite thing even though i'm sure they'll get over it in the next episode duh because you're just awesome like that you're just like duh yeah i know but um that was my least favorite scene. Now let's go to what I thought about the whole drama as a whole. Once more, I'll repeat what I've been saying for a while now. I love how realistic and relatable the drama is. I love how their conversations are so realistic. Like the scene where she was 
thinking about him and she was missing him and he was doing the push and pull game with her in that he didn't want to call her so she grows fond of him and she misses him the scene where she was playing with her hair when she was angry and using her comb on her hair just it's something you can relate to and how she was reacting to her being angry i don't know it was really realistic so i really really like that scene i really like that about the drama how relatable and realistic it is and stuff next um one thing I love about this drama is how the two main couples, Heisu and Jeyu, talk everything out. They don't just, they need pick and they fight almost every time. But I love how there's such a great communication between them. This drama is actually teaching couples out there a great lesson about communication. Maybe if you just talk it out, not even just couples, but just friends, among friends and people you deal with. If you talk out your problems, then you won't have to hold it in your heart and be so angry unnecessarily and, be, and have it eat you up and etc and etc so i like how they just talk about their issues and they just let it go and that's just it the, the communication mwah, to the writer the communication is beautiful i love how they communicate and just get over their problems real fast so i really really like that about this drama another thing that um i loved about this week is the fact that um the um truth finally came out and like for me, I wouldn't say that Gio was the one who killed his father. Neither would I say J-Bomb killed his father. I think they both had a hand in killing the dad. Because if J-Bomb hadn't pushed the dad, then Gio would not have... Um, he, the dad would not have fallen on the knife that Gio was holding. But then again, who was to say that Gio wouldn't have stabbed his dad? Though I don't think he would have personally gone through with it, but anything is possible, right? So I feel there's more to this story that I really want to know about. There's more to this story than just what we've seen from one perspective. So I'd like to see the next perspective, Gio's perspective, so we can accurately decipher what's going on in this relationship. Um, another thing that that I found pretty interesting this week and I loved about this week like I said was the fact that um, it's been found out by his friend Gio's friend what's going on with Gio and I really hope he tells Sunbei so Gio can get treatment real soon and I like how Sunbei is going through the whole things and he's trying to find out what's wrong with Gio to find out a way to treat him so hopefully he finds out real soon and he starts getting treatment ASAP as soon as possible I wouldn't say I'm mad at his mom because I really don't know the full story right now and I don't want to point fingers yet but if she really did put her son behind bars and she knows that her son did do it then I question her a lot but I will say that I don't I wasn't happy with G Yo's mom for one thing and that's how she's so biased towards one of her sons because children notice things no matter how you think they don't notice they really do notice this so I'm sure he noticed and he said it how much love his mom has for his other brother and how she was treating him badly and that's something you should never allow your child to see because it's it comes out really bad it can lead to really grave things so yeah um that's another thing that i had with this drama this week but i think it's gonna be pretty interesting when Jo's relationship with um, Hesu turns into the psychological issue uh, or the problems in their relationship go psychological and not just with her needs picking on things and asking about his ex-girlfriend and her insecurities because she has so much insecurities right now which are getting on my nerves on my last nerves but I can't wait for it to go into something more deeper so we can see how they can survive through that and if they survive through that but I really hate to see him die so i really hope the writers don't just kill him off but this week was pretty interesting it was just cool and calming there wasn't really anything hugely major apart from the fact that they found out about his problem or his friend found out about his problem nothing really crazy happened this week but another thing that I had a problem with this week was how he sued. I know a lot of people may not, I like, I don't support the way he reacted towards her on his writing situation, but that doesn't mean I support the way that he reacted towards it. Because 
If you watched the episode before the scene where he told her to literally get out of his room, she talked about how she knew writers were sensitive and she knew he was having a problem writing. So she should understand that when he's walking, he just wants to walk and he just wants to write. So she, I don't know. Personally, I don't feel like she should have been so sensitive about it. I had a problem with how sensitive she was and I was like, girl, it's, he was just writing. Get out. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just felt that way though, but I don't know about you, y'all maybe you're like, Deborah, how can you say that to her? That was not nice, but I felt that way though, I felt like she needed to get out and give him his pace, because she was becoming a little bit too clingy for me, but yeah, which I could kind of relate with when he told her, dude, are you now falling for me? Like big time, which brings me to that scene that I loved where he was talking about how um, she's objective, she's into him and that's why she can't take objectively to treat him, but yeah that's what I felt about this week. What did you think about this week? Did you like it or did you not like it? I liked it with the exception, exceptions of the naggings which I thought we could do without, but I think the big things are coming soon and the darkness that's coming into the drama is coming real soon but well, those were the only problems that i had with the drama this week and personally if it was another actress and not gong hyojin i probably might not even watch this drama again because nagging i don't like when people nag so it was just getting on my nerves but yeah that's how i felt about drama this week i still love it and i love that it has so much intertwining between her live at work and what's happening to her in her relationship her boyfriend how they bring situations at work that makes her understand things with her boyfriend eg the guy at the bedroom who slept at the bedroom she understood what he was going through because she has a boyfriend who's going through such a situation so she knew how to handle that situation and she didn't just give him the drug to the injection to take and stuff like that so that's something that i love how her work helps her know how to treat J.O. and J.O. helps her know how to treat her work so they kind of balance each other out so I really love that about their relationship how they're very mature about things and how they balance each other out but yeah tell me what you thought about this week in the comments down below um don't forget to give this video a like don't forget to share subscribe and keep being awesome beautiful people you are from me to you you know I've got some love for you Peace.